that that was the proposition of the uh, economist, Mr. Murphy. And I, uh, it's, it's ironic that they're arguing with each other, and I'm going to disagree with him now. Um, just to very quickly answer your question, I, yeah, it's conceivable. Suppose they go ahead and say we're going to sell more, and then uh, war breaks out with Iran the same day. Obviously, gas prices are probably going to go through the roof. And so, in a sense, you could say, oh, we we stole from the spro, and it, d it didn't make gas prices go down. But I think the people in the market, the traders, would know what was guiding their decisions, and so it, they would understand what offsetting factor there was. So, so no, I I don't think it would be devastating if that were to happen, uh, because people would realize what was the offsetting factor. The National Science Foundation and by the Department of Energy. For every mile over 60, um, there was a decrease in efficiency by about 1%. And it was estimated that, presuming you were going 70 miles an hour and now you're going to drop down to 60 miles an hour, that you could see a savings per gallon of gas of about 45 cents a gallon, presuming gas is now at $4.50 a gallon. Something that would be immediate, um, something that would have a double effect, I think, because not only would you be using um, less gas, but you're reducing the, the demand, cre increasing the supply. Now, you are the economist. Uh, I'd like to hear your response to that. I, I guess if I, I'm sorry, go ahead. I guess my, uh, my reaction would just be that, yes, there's all sorts of measures people could take, also you know, get educating the public as to inflating their tires properly, things like that. Uh, my only concern would be to educate people and let them make those trade-offs themselves because, of course, the downside is you're, you're driving longer. You don't get to get to your destination. So there's a, there's a trade-off, and um, Institute for Energy Research typically would like just consumers to have to be able to make those decisions once they have the information. So I figure that the most important thing for me is how much oil is going to the refinery in my area and at what price uh, and uh, how much is being um, demanded by people in my area. And if that price is too high then the supply and demand in my area at least will push the price down. But, uh, it's uh, maybe a little vague in, fi in, in formulating the question here. But how is it that speculators can affect not the price of some futures commodity, which is uh, a security, but rather uh, can affect the price of oil, which you would think would be set by physical supply and demand? How much oil is there available to burn today, and how many, and what will people? How much do they demand it? And I want to put aside for a moment the one fo group of folks that I know can affect the price and that is anyone who can hoard the physical uh, product and that's the Saudis by not opening their spigot. Can anybody explain to me uh, why today's physical supply and physical demand uh, is not where to look uh, in terms of the price I'll be paying at the pump? If, if, if I may, uh, yes. so you're right, the, 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 the mechanism through which speculation in theory could affect the spot price. If, if, if I can interrupt you, there was speculation in silver where somebody just hoarded the silver, and it was in their warehouse. But with the exception of Saudi undeveloped oil fields, I don't know anybody who's hoarding uh, oil, except, I guess, our SPRO. Uh, the gentleman's time has expired. However, we will hear the answers. Okay, yes, I'll be very brief. So you're right. In theory, what would happen is the speculators, by buying futures contracts, push up the futures price. That would give people an incentive to buy at the low spot, store it, and then sell it. But we've seen over the last year that inventories have actually been declining, and so that's why the CFTC and others have said that they don't think excessive speculation is what's driving the recent spike in oil prices. Some members may have additional questions for the panel for which they would like to submit uh, in writing. Uh, without objection, the hearing record will remain open for 30 days for members to submit written questions to the witnesses and place their responses in the record. Uh, before adjourning, on behalf of the chair, the ranking member, and all of the members, we want to thank you for your, your patience today and your indulgence. Uh, again, uh, the hearing is uh, now adjourned.